with the Sicilian. I mean, he's gonna, we're going to see a similar strategy to that he employed in game okay. two. Uh, oh, what? No, well, that was wrong. <laughs> we're seeing something very symmetrical. It's the King's Corn opening, and uh, we will see. Up, we okay. see the Berlin. So back to the Spanish opening, back to the Berlin that actually favoured Nakamura in the matchup yesterday. Nakamura getting great position out of that game. Um, we do see the anti-Berlin, as we call it, when you don't allow black to trade or take a pawn in the centre. You don't see the exchange of queens at an early stage. With his last move, Magnus jumping forward with the black knight into the centre of the board and Nakamura replying instantly. Black was actually attacking White's bishop there on the left side, White's light squared bishop, but Nakamura has ignored the attack on that bishop, counter-attacking with that last move, bringing his bishop out. Now, if Black plays knight takes bishop, his own bishop will be vulnerable along the diagonal. So, nice move there by Nakamura. It is known. Magnus immediately reacted. You saw this body language. He knows this line. He's just trying to recall what the best move is. He trades the knights. Yeah, and I actually have to say that this is actually something that Hikaru has played, I think, four or five, four or five times before. He had games against Sergei Karyakin, amongst many others. And, uh, yep, we are still following that game. So definitely within the... Magnus Carlsen's framework. Yeah, so we have seen some trades, those knights, some, a set of bishops leaving the board as well. White's bishop stepping back there. White spent a lot of time with that bishop. As far as I know, I've seen this position before. I've studied it a little bit. As far as I know, it should just be very balanced. It's not the most ambitious way to play the opening with white, and that's reflected in the bar. Even at this early stage, black is doing quite well. Black has no weaknesses. Black has managed to trade off some pieces. There's no direct attack against black's king. No problems at all for Magnus Carlsen in this opening. It looks like Nakamura maybe not trying to gamble, not risking everything on this rapid game. It's very balanced at the moment. Equal pawns, equal pieces. I expect to see Magnus maybe just centralise the black rook and it'll start slowing down the pace of the game. It's going to start uh, revolving around manoeuvring. Who can put their pieces on the best squares? No open lines right now. No tactics, no attacks, no threats. Is it Hikaru saying just, I'm not going to lose this game, I'm going to be as safe as I possibly can? Yeah. <laughs> so far, yes. Yeah. Uh, for sure he has some small ideas in mind, probably he studied where to put the pieces, how to put some slight pressure on Black's position. But... Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, in the Hikaru Nakamura Sergei Karyakin game from 2019, that game continued with... Pass pawn and win this endgame. Uh, 
Um, so right now, Magnus has a choice. He doesn't need to capture the White Knight immediately. He does, however, do that. And now the Black Queen sidesteps from the attack. Would you say we're getting closer to tie breaks? Yes. We're very close now. You can tell on Nakamura's body language. He knows there's not too much life left in this position. The rooks will disappear from the board and the queens will just balance each other out. The symmetrical pawn structure means no weaknesses as well in either side's camp. There's only one, uh, one small trick in the position, and that is that white can't get too adventurous with the queen because black is in fact threatening the checkmate to uh, right on the bottom row. Yeah, so if white's queen disappears off to the left side of the board, the black queen would just bring herself down to the bottom. The white king is trapped. Um, so I would expect to see maybe white just bring the king towards the centre. And yeah, yep, not much to do. Yeah, not much to talk about here. Um, okay, black just pushing the pawn. They look ready for tiebreak <laughs> Yeah. I think that's the only reason we haven't seen a draw yet. They're just psyching themselves up. There's, there's no need to rush to press that draw button. Um, also, I think there might be a rule involved that you can't make a draw before 30 moves unless there's a repetition. So the players, they're just psyching themselves up. They know tiebreaks are imminent. We're going to go down to blitz chess. Yes, yes. are so close, that's the only way to separate them. Well, fantastic for us. Yeah. Oh, I'm looking for it. And I'm actually, it's so sad that we're going to lose one of these two players. I mean, Magnus has been playing some super entertaining games throughout the whole thing. He carded, well, Wesley so said it. Maybe the most impressive player right now playing the best chess. Yeah, I mean, especially, well, especially this quarterfinal. I mean, he was undefeated in the prelims. Yeah. This quarterfinal, he showed he can hang with the big guys. He can beat, he can even crush Magnus a good day and um, yeah he's been mightily impressive so far oh, yeah but on your subject i also will be very sad to see one of these players go because this match has been absolutely exhilarating in so yes. many decisive games both of them trading blows with the white pieces and then the black pieces and uh, okay here we're going to see the makings of a draw offer yeah black's queen now has stepped into the position checking white also attacking some of the white pawns Nakamura, he has options here. He doesn't necessarily need to block that check, but probably the safest would just be to bring the White Queen back and block that check. There we go, the White Queen defense pawn. I think Magnus is going to check, and uh, I'm expecting Hikaru to block that check with his Queen. Yeah. If the Queens come off as well, it's just a dead draw. Uh, nothing to be done. So Magnus could trade the Queens if he wants, but he's just going to repeat the position. It looks like White's King has nowhere safe to hide. We'll see the White Queen block, the Black Queen check, White Queen block, and etc as they say <laughs> yeah well mine is this no well, hikari sorry is thinking about this yeah <laughs> again i think he's not necessarily in a rush to force the tie breaks he knows they're coming but he doesn't want to take any risk doesn't want to uh, for example put his piece on the wrong square actually i think every move is pretty much fine here for white and those uh, pawns well they are really beautiful i have to say so <laughs> much symmetry here yeah. Well, we have a different move to uh, the check that we were anticipating. Magnus has gone one square further and is now attacking two pawns. Okay, but there is no problems whatsoever because once the queen steps off that diagonal, well then, as long as Hikaru doesn't uh, blunder a pawn with check, then he can simply play the okay, cake. Now we're going to see an action. I don't need to describe it. It's going to be on the board. So Black has grabbed a pawn, but he has misplaced his queen. So the Black Queen cannot act as, as a defender of the Black King. So Black's one pawn up. If he gets one move, he might be winning. But the problem is, he's not going to be able to stop the checks. There's no way to stop the White Queen checking the Black King. There we go. We see a check. And there's no way to block it. There we go. The position repeats itself and a draw. It's a draw, and ladies and gentlemen,